okay, what we're trying to bring out really is uh, what you feel differentiates you. Because obviously we can't talk about your whole organization. There's too much to say. So um, if you could maybe go through um, ethical consumer, bearing in mind that your audience is obviously other ethical consumer organizations. So they do know the, the industry, so to speak, to some degree. Uh, and talk about what you think um, differentiates you and any of the characteristics you think you should mention about uh, ethical consumer. Oh, good one. Yeah, the differentiator. From from other kind of uh, providers of online ranking information, is that what you mean? Well, actually, it's not all online, and that's one of the things I certainly think you should mention because you have a magazine, um, Doctor Ellis. Uh, what's his second name? Yeah. Anyway, Doctor Ellis Jones has has the book, of course, which is is proving quite popular. Um, so it's yeah. not always online, and in fact. Um, Stefani de Mezier from Phospho has just been talking about the importance of people meeting offline to um, uh, keep them involved and, uh, and give them all the sort of things they want. So, yeah, um, I mentioned the magazine as well, certainly. OK, I suppose I guess I guess longevity. That's one of our one of our key attributes. In Indeed. We've been, a, been around for doing this stuff for 21 years or something uh, uh, terrible like that, which gives us a perspective on a lot of the change, I suppose. Um, so there's that, and we, you know, uh, I guess that means that, oh, you've gone purple. I, I guess that means that. <laughs> I do we, that um, occasionally. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that means that. Um, uh, We've we've got a quite developed system here. I mean, in the way that systems kind of develop complexity over time, we've developed really quite a complicated thing here that both that has online and offline versions. It has scoring. It has um, probably uh, amongst uh, of all the data that you can get. I think. Um, I mean, in fairness, I haven't checked everyone else's data, you know, in the last 12 months, particularly in a systematic way. Um, but we kind of pride ourselves in the fact that the transparency of our data uh, goes all the way down to explaining each individual score. And, um, uh, and we think that's kind of key to making that element of it work. Um, I guess we also slightly distinguish by uh, our kind of quasi-commercial approach to the data. There's lots and lots of free um, systems out there, and um, the the fact that we're trying to generate revenue through sales. So there, there's a few things to distinguish us. Are there any more you can think of that I might have missed? Well, I I think you should mention uh, not not just your transparency, but your level of independence and democratic control, in fact, because that is not as widespread as you might think. A lot of organizations might be for profit. Uh, they might have investors, et cetera, et cetera. So um, yeah. as far as I know, you, you're also independent and very democratic, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I mean, you know, we are a cooperative and uh, we are controlled by... Uh, not our workers anymore, but just uh, by a combination of our workers and our customers and, and some non-execs and stuff. So, um, and we're as independent as it's practical to be in this game. I mean, it, it's I, I guess with some regret that we've had to become, you know, consultants to industry and campaign groups around uh, uh, the, um, the sector in order to make the whole business stack up. Um, Although, you know, I, I mean, actually, we learn as much from doing that kind of work as, uh, as we teach in many ways. So, so yeah, I mean, our independence isn't as perfect as I'd like. And, you know, I know that uh, uh, for some of the mainstream consumers associations who are completely uh, free of industry influence, the fact that we are not that free is a bit of an issue to them. Mm, indeed. Um, because I mean, obviously, I, I'm aware of quite a variety of models around uh, around the world for doing this. Just to uh, explain a bit about yours, you use qualitative 
analysis of third party journalism so you have a group of researchers that um, bring in third party journalism and score that based on uh, an ever evolving set of rules as far as I understand is that is that true yeah uh, well described um, I, gu- I guess I mean uh, that was how we started really um, and over time um, we've 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 developed more uh, we spend increasing amounts of research time on analyzing what we could describe as corporate response data csr reports uh, environmental reporting uh, social reporting of of all kinds um, uh, and policy development and practice development within corporations around all the issues that we do so that's not kind of it's it, it's it's almost it's almost primary research in a way, and and I guess as as companies get more and more used to uh, consumer markets scrutinising them for ethical uh, performance, um, they develop more and more complexity of stuff. And you know now doing a uh, a buyer's guide in 2011, you have to read 20 CSR reports, each of 100 pages each. Order. You know, uh, so that's that's a lot of additional kind of staff time you've got to fund uh, in order to get a really decent perspective on the on on a sector. Whereas twenty years ago, we were just collecting, you know, journalistic, uh, you know, this company's had pollution or exploited this factory or done this, that, and the other. So, so the level of complexity has moved in- incredibly in order to to deal with the kind of the uh, the very sophisticated corporate response that all this has engendered really and to some degree i mean this is you know uh, this aspect of of our work is one of those areas that we think you know the potential for international collaboration would be fantastic because it's you know it is possible to systematize that work um you know, analysing the reporting coming out of companies is, you know, it, it, it's less. I mean, I, I, politicised isn't the right word, but it, it's it's easier. It, it's less easy to. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's quite easy to, to find a set of parameters that make sense as, as a measuring thing for them, and uh, so so yeah, uh, that that. You know, but but increasingly, I suppose probably fifty percent of our research now is is instead of looking at, uh, at journalistic stuff, looking at stuff that's come uh, from corporate CSR departments in response to it all. This is very interesting. Um, talking about the potential for sharing data, because there have, there's an enormous uh, amount of different types of data that could be shared. Of course, there is underlying data like for instance uh, if if one organization pulled together um, all of the political donations from all of the companies that's underlying data um, if, if someone um, however produces some qualitative scores on something there's 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 some opinion and modeling going in there of course and that that's not necessarily going to be agreed by everyone and, and thus not uh, possible to collaborate on um, and there's all sorts of other types of data um, even just a, a list of company names and, and their addresses from which you can report on would, would be shareable of course so there's all sorts of things that can be done um, and in fact Ellis Jones also said that um, it might be interesting to look at the times when the ethical consumer organisations disagree on a score and between them try to get to the root of where that disagreement comes from. So all sorts of uh, types of collaboration on on there. Could I ask you, uh, on another uh, vein, um, how many users you have? Uh, On uh, of the website. um, And the magazine, yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, the... The highest users of the website, which is thirty to forty thousand monthly, the magazine sells now around five thousand a month. Uh, sorry, five yeah, it has five thousand subscribers. Um, the um, you know the corporate critic database has 
you know, around, um, you know, a couple of hundred people that dob in and out of it every now and again, and 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 around 20 to 40 regular users at any one time. So they're all, you know, they're, depending on the level of the data, those are the kind of broad, broad statistics. Oh, when you say 20 to 40 users at any one time, is that per day? Or per well, week? no, I mean, I, what I, uh, those are annual subscribers that, you know, oh, okay. external organisations who are using it, you know, sometimes on a daily basis, uh, but are giving it very heavy usage. You know, there's a couple of hundred folk who bob in and out every now and again to pick up particular things. And uh, so that those are the patterns on it. And that's partly partly to do with how we charge for use and that sort of thing. Sure. Um, do you do you feel any growth rates going on there? Because I mean, you, you say two hundred active users. It feels like it's the same, more or less the same two hundred people that bob in and out during the year. Um, are there any new users coming in? Uh, yeah, I guess the um, I, um, there's a. I mean it. The corporate critic user group is primarily charities, and that uh, that um, you know goes, right, okay. You know, so that that's kind of spreading in an organic way across charities as they kind of share information about how they operate. I mean, to some degree, the growth is not entirely, but but pretty linked to our own activity to create growth. If you see what I mean. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah. You know, if we spend five grand on marketing, you know, s- subscriptions to the website, then we will get commensurate growth unless we're really rubbish at it. But you, you know, so, so unless we put, you know, back a really bad horse, um, you know. <laughs> and again, you know, if we put if we put a lot of resources into marketing corporate critic, then we will see growth at that time. You know, so so. You know, as we were talking about the other day, um, you know, there's um, there's only there's not much truth these days to build something and people will come necessarily. You know, the needs mm. the build is just a very small part of the communication equation, really, and uh, and it's actually getting out there and telling people about it that's that's, that's the harder of the two tasks, really. Yeah, sure. Well, I mean, let's talk about marketing because um, there's been all sorts of attitudes towards that. um, And I think there are lots of possibilities and changes going on in marketing these days. Um, I mean, you've talked about what I would call marketing 1.0, which is you spend £5,000 trying to advertise something and you get X thousand pounds back in new subscriptions. And of course, the general model is that you then plough some of that back into marketing and you grow your company, uh, assuming that, of course, you make more money from your marketing than it actually costs, uh, which isn't always the case. I mean, that's one model. There's also these other models which can involve attempting to virally spread ideas which is uh, for anyone very much a black art still how you actually create something that can virally spread through communities Um, uh, are you looking into that second type of marketing you know we have uh, you know we now one of the things that we introduced this year is is we now um uh, as a part of illustrating our story, really, uh, the, the ethical consumer um, um, the, uh, story, we we take the most interesting, you know, we have uh, researchers that add stories to our database every day, and we now ask them to, uh, you know, post the most interesting story that they've added into a little box, and then we select the best box at three o'clock every day, and then we Twitter and Facebook out that story that we have as a story of the day and um, you know sometimes they get picked up and sometimes they roll you know depending on how good the story is you know very often it's come from somewhere else so it's like uh, you know we're almost like sometimes we're retweeting someone else's press release that came out that morning so sometimes it's it's part it becomes part of a bigger picture of putting out a, a story about corporate misbehavior but sometimes it is genuinely just our own something that we've stumbled across and done so and uh, I, I guess uh, you know it it drives traffic uh, and uh, 
to um, and yeah, we're three months into that program and we're going to keep going on it. And that, that seems to work quite well. Um, and uh, and like like all you know um, viral stuff, uh, I think we found that one of the best approaches is to is to scatter gun because you don't know what's going <laughs> to get picked up. And you know, one once every three months, you find that you've just hit a vein, and off it goes. So, so yeah, I mean, if the, you know, that's that's not a dark art. That's <laughs> that's. <laughs> That's an you know that's a very exact science. It just doesn't work very often. <laughs> Not often repeatable. Yeah, it is. It's very difficult, isn't it? And it'd be wonderful if we could figure it out and engineer it, of course. Um, and of course, ethical consumption and all the data can appear quite dry. It can appear quite negative and uh, be boring. And the um, process of being an ethical consumer is actually quite a lonely one there's no kind of social aspect to it offline certainly um and uh, the, these facts about a lot of the way that people ethical ethically consume make it quite um an unenjoyable uh, uh task to be involved in um do you have any thoughts on trying to change that I know that's an enormous question to, to yeah, I mean, make it. Yeah, yeah, to some degree, it's a. Um, I, some degree, it's an issue of communication and telling, getting the story right. Because I sort of disagree with you that it's a lonely practice, it, because you know most of the the data that we're dealing with are the result or or, or of. Collective campaigns, really, where people are trying to build, you know, mass movement support around an issue to drive change, and you know, although the you, you, your individual purchase in the shop of this chocolate bar is a is of itself a you know a, of necessity a lonely act, the the, <laughs> the fact that you've made a decision based around. You know the fair trade movement, which is a you know complex global movement involving you know literally millions of people, or or involved you know anti-slavery campaigns run by an organisation which itself has membership and campaigns that you may or may not be involved in. So I think so perhaps it's perhaps it's communication and perhaps it's a matter of of, of uh, but I think I think quite a lot of of. Uh, Certainly, our our readers or users kind of get that uh, and understand that they're kind. You know, th- you know, there's the notion of solidarity purchasing, and then you know, which is about you know, your your solidarity with groups overseas, but also that you know. Uh, so, so really, you know, although being a consumer in classic economics is a sort of atomized thing, that all of ethical consumption really is about. Um, uh, about collective actions all being aggregated into one place, I think. Um, so, so yeah, and I, you know, and I'm sure you know there's a role for there's a role for for web here and community building. I'm sure, and uh, and to some degree that that works, you know, in, in on a, you know in some places. Uh, who knows? It may work here one of these days. Uh, we live Indeed. in hope. I think you mentioned to me last time we spoke, or the time before last, um, that you were interested in allowing um, other organisations to feed in uh, information into your system. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, I might have... uh, Chinese whispers over time Um, but it it was a kind of style of crowdsourcing that was instead of just being anyone who arrived at the website could put anything they wanted in it was actually you were trying to bring together a lot of these organizations that are involved in uh, creating the data in the first place NGOs and charities and actually allowing them to put articles into your database is that correct or am I just making that up yeah no that's absolutely right and to some degree I mean this is one of this is this is one of the core discussions that we're going to be having next Friday at our conference really and this is one of the things that we want to open up um, you know uh, 
not not least, you know, and so we're hoping to have some charities and organisations down there, you know, to ask them whether they really would bother, you know, would they want to do it, would they bother, is it, is it, if it is interest to them, you know, is it too complicated, whatever, you know. So um, we're, uh, and we're in the process of, of doing piloty related stuff around this. I think we, the, um, we looked at models, uh, you know, this is again, this is stuff that I'm going to be talking about on Friday to some degree. You know, we looked at models where the systems were completely open to everyone uh, in in this world of CSR ranking. And I kind of got the impression that the PR departments and CSR departments of corporates were sort of outgunning everybody else just in terms of the time and resources they had to input data to this stuff and um, uh, you know and kind of that's not really that doesn't interest me so much as providing a useful platform for CSR departments to input their data um, uh, and so uh, you know and so we're looking around at, around developing the invitation only model and uh, and some you know and, uh, and the work that we've done on it thus far really is that you know the technological issues are the simplest ones really they're not that complicated to do um, and really the the complicated thing is being able to create something that is of sufficient value for people to bother if you suit me and you get enough there's enough uh, and I, you know, I think we do still have enough critical mass at ethical consumer around its database uh, in order for that to work. And I think, you know, um, uh, for there to be enough appeal that uh, for, for NGOs to think, well, if I put that in there, that's just going to feed this data into consumer markets in some way or other. Another. And uh, I, yeah, I, um, I hope that we're going to be able to make that story stick, if you see what I mean, and, and get folk to do it. And yeah, we've and, and again, stuff I'm going to be talking about on Friday is we've already um, we've already got a, a, a test thing working in South Africa at the moment um, with uh, um, a, an organisation out there. Uh, and we're, you know, we're kind of mod, we're mod, you know, the interesting story for me being geeky and, uh, and loving to look at the, the detail is that, you know, we're modifying the data that we have, uh, you know, the, the database so that we can store data very specifically that applies to that region. And they've asked for um, uh, new categories on companies HIV policy, which in South Africa is pretty important. And uh, our company's um, uh, attitude to, to black empowerment and hiring on the staff, which again is a kind of labelling system that they have out there, completely new. So, so it's quite exciting for us just to see that taking shape. You know, kind of using the core database that we have and, and building bits around it to make it work uh, somewhere else in the world. Um, can I touch on something you just said? Because um, you talked about convincing NGOs that it's worth it to put information into your database. Um, one thing that would be key there, of course, is how much of an effect they think it's actually having. What sort of feedback can you can you really give about that database because it's very difficult i mean obviously you can't say okay we convinced 20,000 people to buy this product instead of that one this year because you don't really get that information um uh from the magazine or the database do you so i mean can you really give people feedback or is it really just guesswork i mean the uh, one of the key things that campaign groups are in this for is to change company behavior really and that, you know, in a way, consumers are just, or the, the purchasers are just the conduit here of the idea to the company. And it's it's the company that, uh, and what it's doing is that people, is the thing that people are actually trying to change at the end of all this. And um, we, you know, we do have concrete examples of companies uh, who come to us about their ethical 
being you know either upset that we've got it wrong and telling us how we're scoring it instead but, <laughs> but more often you know it just to some degree they are um, you know through that score and the, their mark against their arch rivals they're looking to understand what they can do to move up the ladder they understand you know corporates you know understand this rivalry and competition and all this stuff and it speaks their language and we've got lots of examples of of companies who's you know who looking at this system pick up on things that they have to do to improve and go away and work on it you know and, and so we know that this is you know uh, we know that it's having an effect in the corporate world you know um, you know perhaps you know it's not pulling oil companies out of antarctica or anything mm-hmm. kind of, uh, you know, particularly uh, fantastic like that but it, you know it's having meaningful effect on you know the way companies have approached their supply chains into china it's having meaningful effects on the way that companies are reporting some of their uh, you know, environmental and social impacts and communicating that and developing complexity around how they're managing impacts. So, so uh, you know, I, we've, we've got that kind of example, which I think to some degree is more compelling than going, we've got kind of 50 consumers using this data. Right, yeah, of course. Okay, that's uh, half an hour. Yeah. I think that's good. I mean, I don't want to, because, uh, uh, I mean, you know, I, part of this is feeding into a conference, which I'm going to say all this stuff again, as it were, because I've, I've got my own, uh, I've got my own platform, as it were. Uh, yeah. Um, so, uh, um, Hopefully, it's more co- in a more coherent way. You know, <laughs> well, you won't have me throwing questions at you, so. No, 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 no. Well, not maybe. At all. No, no, it's, <laughs> it's vital, you know. It's really important. This stuff, uh, the, uh, the, the stuff is communicated. 